Yo, KP Sky here. What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. We're going to do something a little bit different today. It's a gloomy, rainy, dark day outside today, so there's not a lot of light coming into the home theater. So we're going to take the time to talk about the Odyssey Multi EQ Editor app that we kind of introduced a few months back when I kind of showed you guys around and how it worked and what things did. But we're going to go a little more in depth because if you guys are familiar with my channel, we just finished the series with the Bose system where we completely deconstructed my current system and put in place a bow system but now that that's over i put my system back together and of course you have to rerun odyssey and all that stuff so i've done that but i want to show you what it's done and what odyssey or any other room correction is trying to do so what i'm going to start with here is the room correction results there the second tab from the top we're going to click that there and on the left side is going to show you what odyssey detected before the uh, calibration was ran and then what it tried to do after so this one is the front left speaker here and you can see in the green bar the frequencies were everywhere so on the left side here from top to bottom the y-axis you can see the decibels from negative what negative 60 up to plus 10 plus 20 db and you can see how everything kind of looks scattered on the bottom, going from left to right, or the x-axis, is the frequencies from 0 to all the way up to 10k hertz. And so you can see how different frequencies are in your room. And this is my room personally, but it's going to look a lot like this in your room before you run any kind of calibration. Everything's just different levels of volume. 20 hertz may not sound very good, but 80 hertz is way, way too loud. And then 200 hertz is kind of flat, not too loud, not too soft. So what? room correction wants to do is try to level those frequencies out so that everything sounds the same volume which is kind of what you want and then you can kind of play with it from there so this is the front left speaker and you can see on the left side the green graph everything's just bouncing which way nothing's ever really level with each other so you have a pretty sporadic sound and then on the red side the after on the right you can see odyssey went in and pretty much smoothed that out for the most part now this is going to change um based off what speaker you're using because your speaker has its own characteristics its own cabinetry its own resonance and so odyssey is going to try to make all those frequencies sound the same if we go to front right you can kind of see the same similar thing all the frequencies on the left were just everywhere Odyssey kind of change that to the right. Now, you never want your frequencies on one speaker to look the same as the other speaker, unless your room is perfectly, and I mean perfectly symmetrical, where the same things on the left side is on the same things on the right side, what's on the top is on the bottom, it has to be perfect. And if it's not, then your graph shouldn't be either. What Odyssey did, did for me was line my graph so that each speaker sounds almost the same as another. So the left speaker, they calibrated it to sound one way and then they matched that with the right speaker and the center channel and so forth and so on. And as we scroll through here, here's the center channel, you can see what it did to the center channel, surround sound, here's the surround right, and then the front height left, front height right. Now, this is very interesting because as you can see, my front height, which is actually some small satellites, don't have a lot of bass into them. So they're actually rolled off very quickly once they hit 100 hertz. And my crossover is actually there too. And so based off this graph, you can kind of see what the receiver or the amplifier did to your crossovers. They crossed mine over at 120 hertz. So anything under that has a steep, steep, steep roll off really quickly. And you can see that through some of the other graphs. This is my rear height. These are my prime elevation speakers. They rolled them off around 80 and it just just quickly drops from there and you can see on the left side it was just every which way before calibration was ran there's the rear height there now the subwoofer is a fun one to look at this is my left on the greens that is before this is what it sounded like it was every which way some frequencies are way louder than others and whatnot and that's also because i had the subs p eq'd um right into the sub itself differently than what odyssey wanted but on the right side you can see it tried to smooth those frequencies around that 80 70 hertz range on down it's a smooth response and that's what you want and then everything after 100 120 hertz doesn't too much matter now based off the after side on the red right around that 100 hertz area you see two giant dips and that says to me that before eq um 
it was way too, way too deep. It, it just dropped off. There was a big knoll right there. And Odyssey went in and kind of corrected that as much as it could. Now, there's more we can do to try to get that flatter close to that zero dB mark. But you can see that Odyssey took it from, what, around a negative, I don't know, a 16 dB or so, back up to around negative four, five, six, or seven. So it gave me a lot more bass back in those regencies that I was missing. And that's what Odyssey is trying to do. That's what any calibration is trying to do for you. Now I want to go into speaker detection results here. And this is kind of going to tell you kind of what my speakers were set based off Odyssey's IQ. So the front were set to small and all the other ones were set to small. And I personally like that at default, they always set my fronts to large because my speakers are huge. They're 120 pound beasts and they get pretty low. But for me, if you have them at large, it completely turns off the crossover. So if I was to turn this here to large right there, it's gonna change that to crossover to off and I'll show you. So if I go here and click large, it automatically makes my crossover at full band, meaning it's gonna play all the frequencies that's the that's possible. Even the subwoofer, the low frequency that the sub plays is gonna come out of my front stage as well. And the reason why we don't want this is because one, you can add a lot of different characteristics that is not good. A lot of deep bass coming out of a front sound stage could sound very unnatural, very inaccurate, even bloaty and muffled, or maybe just overwhelming. So when you change it back to small, it allows you to go in and change your crossover. Now I have mine at 40 hertz because my personally having these big towers crossed over so high, it's kind of a waste of a tower. And so I keep mine kind of crossover low. I like them to play with some pretty good bass and take some of the work off the subwoofer so they're not playing everything. It also helps me with localization. If everything's coming from the subwoofer, you're gonna be able to figure out where that subwoofer's coming from. So if you take some of that weight off the subwoofer and allow your speakers to breathe a little bit, but you know, give them some power, it sounds pretty good in my personal opinion. Everything else is set to small. My center channel is pretty beefy too, so I have mine set at 60 hertz. As well as my surrounds, my bookshelves are very big. They play down to 30, 37, I think, I believe. So 60 hertz is a pretty even and smooth response for them. My front heights, again, like I was saying, we saw in the graph, my front heights are small satellites and they're crossover at 120. My rear heights are at 60. That's, that's my prime elevation speakers from SVS that play down to 50, 55. Um, so I have mine crossover at 60. Then I have two subwoofers there as well. Now let's go into the curve editor here. This actually allows you to change that graph that we first saw the before and after. You can actually go into each speaker in a more detailed area and change the graph however you'd like to. And it will tell you where you were and where you're going every time you change it here. So I can go in at any point of the graph and change whatever I want to change. And if I don't like it, I can undo it and revert back to what I had at the beginning. And so I usually leave my my floor standing speakers and my height speakers the same. I let it do whatever it wants to do. But my subwoofer is where I actually like to have some fun. Me personally, I love really deep bass, really, really deep bass. Sub 25, I like to hear it. And so for me, I wouldn't mind going into around 25 hertz or so and maybe upping it up a few dB or so and only that frequency. And you can see how it affects the rest of the bandwidth. If I was to change everything, it makes everything higher. So anything before it starts to raise up with it, but the highest peak is at 30 hertz there. So I'm gonna leave that alone, but you can kind of see that you can go in and change anything you like to. I can do it for each subwoofer if I'd like to. So let's say I wanted to change my center channel. I didn't like um, a lot of bass coming from my center channel. It sounded too muddy. So I could go into around 50, 60 hertz and I could lower that down if I like to. Or maybe I wanted a little more bass out of my mid-range or whatever because my voices didn't sound unnatural. I can go in and just raise that up as high or low as I would like to, but we're gonna leave that alone for now. Now your target sound options is, um, you'll hear it and call a different thing and different receivers from different manufacturers, but high frequency roll off or treble booster or reducer or something sounds too sharp, you can go in and change that. And you can see the difference between the left and the right. So on the right side, on high frequency roll off number one, if you look towards the bottom half of this graph, or excuse me, on the far right of the graph, you see the slope of it falls off much quicker than of high frequency roll off too. It's much more gradual. So if you find a speaker that's way too harsh, has a lot of top end, maybe like an older clip speaker or something of the sort of a horn, you can change your roll off frequency to whatever you prefer, whatever sounds best. If you need something that gradually rolls off um, at the higher end, you can do that. If you need something that kind of goes quickly, 
you can do that as well on the app. And I believe this goes for all your speakers, not just the front or the center, but it's gonna change your graph for everything. Now, Odyssey settings, this is, of course, uh, specific to Odyssey, but other receivers have different names for the same thing. So dynamic EQ, I always turn it off because what it tries to do is, especially at lower volumes, it tries to add an EQ based off what volume level you're listening to. So it starts to change the frequencies or that graph, that curve, depending on how loud or how soft. And you probably will notice it more on the softer end than the louder end. The softer you're listening to it, maybe like at nighttime, you're not trying to disturb anybody. It's going to boost up the treble and maybe the vocals and bring down the bass to keep everybody asleep, but you still be able to hear the effects and, and such. I usually keep that off. I want it to be the same at all volume levels. I don't want any, any extra EQ changing as I change the volume. I want it to sound the same at whatever volume I'm listening to. If I can't hear it, I'll just tune it up. Um, the next one is dynamic EQ. Obviously, dynamic volume adjusts the dynamic range to maximize the impact of content during night listening. It's like what we were talking about. Um, when you turn the volume down, it starts to get harder to hear bass effects, to hear thunder, to hear planes flying overhead. So it emphasizes or ups those volumes when things fly ahead, but keeps the overall volume low so that you're not missing the movie, but you're not waking anybody else up either. I personally, again, like to turn that off. I don't want any extra EQ going. I don't want the receiver to try to guess what I want. I want to be able to go ahead and control that on my own. And then Aussie LFC. Aussie LFC stops low bass frequency from traveling through walls without sacrificing bass enjoyment in the listening room. So it's going to roll off those lower frequencies for you. So that sub 25, 20 hertz, those, those frequencies that are hard to tame, the ones that kind of travel through walls and through ceilings and to the neighbor's house, those are the frequencies that most people get disturbed by, especially um, even around the 40, 45, 50 hertz, where usually most subwoofers are most prominent. It tries to cut those off without completely cutting it off in your listening room. So basically it just lowers the subwoofer for you a few dBs at certain frequencies, at certain volumes, just to keep um, all of that, that bass contained. And that's not just um, in lower volume listening, that's throughout the whole listening spectrum from low volume, high volume, whatever the case may be. I keep that off as well. I don't want them to do anything to my subwoofer that I didn't personally ask for. If I want to lower the bass from keeping it keeping it in my room, I'll just turn down the volume. I don't want them to do it for me. I don't necessarily know when they're doing it. I don't want to have to guess, so I keep that off as well. So when you have the Odyssey Multi EQ Editor app, you have the option to make several different profiles for your system. So this is the first one, the one you see living room set up. That's the one that I currently have right now. If I was to want to create a new one, I would run Odyssey all over again. It would walk me through all the steps again, and it would probably give you the same graph that you guys saw on the first one. It would give me that same graph, but then I can go in and tweak it differently. And maybe I have two presets, two styles now. So maybe I have a living, a living room profile and then maybe a nighttime profile. And then maybe I want to take it and move it to a different room. I can just switch that profile so that not only do I have multiple options, but I also don't have to run calibration again. I could just click on this preset and it's going to put those settings right to my room. So if I ever change my speakers or something like that, if I wanted that profile, I can just click on it and then tailor it to my listening um, by ear or by microphone or anything else I had externally. If you want to change this to a room or something different than that, you can keep that profile. You can make a different profile. You don't have to run Odyssey again every time you change something if you don't want to. But I recommend you do that because some characteristics are going to change. So that's the editor app in a nutshell. A lot of people wondered if it's worth $19.99 on iOS and Android devices. I think it is if you know what you're doing. Um, if you also, I think it's also beneficial if you don't have software of your own, like a room EQ wizard of some sort. Um, if you don't have that, this is actually a good foot in the door. Again, it's still reliant on a little bit of background knowledge. You have to know what the graphs are telling you and what terms mean. Um, you also have to know what you're listening for to be able to benefit from it. Um, but I think it's a good app to start with. I think it's worth the $20. I heard some people tell me that it crashes a lot or anything like that. I haven't had any problems like that. And you're only really going to use it once or twice. You're going to run cal calibration. You're going to go in and see the settings, change it how you like it. And you're probably never going to touch it for a while until you move something or upgrade. So it's not a bad app to have right on your phone, your iPad, maybe even your computer if it has like a Play Store or something of the sort, Apple iStore, I iApps, whatever y'all call it. I'm an Android fan, so I don't have anything iTunes like. But 
it's a good app to have. Um, it's $19, so anybody can have it. Most people have some sort of tablet or a phone that can download apps with. So it's nice to have, especially if you're really into home theater anyway. You want to get the best sound you can possibly get. Um, and of course, you can have somebody who's knowledgeable, like a professional. They can come in and calibrate it for you, ETC. So guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Something different, a little bit different. I'm not on camera this time, just kind of talking to you guys. I'm not using my regular camera. I'm using my phone to record this, so my voice sounds a lot different different but I just wanted to touch on this app a little bit more for those who were looking to get it and if you don't know about it or don't have it I want you guys to take a look at it and see what you guys think based off the video so leave me a comment down below let me know what you guys think about Odyssey versus everybody else MCACC or um, Anthem Arc Room Correction and you know why pal from Yamaha let me know what you think about Odyssey is it the best calibration from a receiver that you guys know of let me know that down below also let me know what you guys think of the app as well have a good, safe rest of your day. We will see you in the next video. K-Pace Guy out. Peace.